soon as you push that button up. It is. <laughs> what should we say? Test, test, A, B, C, D, E, G, T, test, test. Come on, somebody say something. Using a tape recorder can be a big bother. Huh? Speaking to the microphone, please. As simple as or even easier than playing a record. Slowly turn the dial through its full tone range. We reinvented tape recording. Tune to this radio station today. You will not hear true reproduction on any high bias cassette. Not the first play, not the one thousand. It's not just a cassette. It's a little music machine that delivers the best sound for its sound. But after 1,000 plays, can the same cassette still shatter a glass? The cassette with the best Höhen dynamic in test. Tell me, do you love me? Uh, God, Collectors this is hell. Hell. I'm in a living hell. The worst night of my life it's yesterday. Select from many makes and models. Model. Complete sort of collection. Get chewed up and worn out. They were abandoned in the digital age. To the naked eye, a compact disc looks like silver. Compact discs are now the format of choice with the sales figures to prove it. I think we might be seeing the end of the cassette uh, within the next few years. Eight day, the hell is that? Aha. Allee, ik ken het nummer niet en daarom zag, zag ik niet wie dat, wie dat was. Ja. Hoe jong ben jij nu? Huh? Ik ben 88. Ja, ja, dan ben je toch een jaartje ouder dan ik. Ik word in november 87. Ja. En hoe gaat het met je gezondheid goed? Ik klaag niet. Ik heb niet veel te klagen, nee. Behalve dat ik oud word. Maar ik, ik heb deze week... Met andere dingen aan mijn hoofd, en ik heb een Amerikaan op bezoek. Die, oh ja. die, die maakt een film over de cassette. Oh, wat leuk, over de, de, de kleine cassette. Ja. Want ja, die hadden we nooit vrij moeten geven, hè. Dat moet, we hadden we... Nou ja, dat, 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 dat was geen succes geworden. De Japanners hebben met, de, met die cassette hun uh, Walkman gedaan, hè? Ja, precies. De eerste Walkman, daar hebben ze maar echt veel van verkocht. Ja, nou, wij hebben er ook veel verkocht, hoor. Ja, ook nog met CD's, ja. ja. Frans, bedankt voor de uitnodiging. Ik, ik bel terug. Hè? Ja, af Dag, hè. De groeten. Tot beste, ja. Nou. The problem begins at the moment that we introduced the cassette. Hmm? A year after our introduction, there came a lot of imitations in Japan. And then we said, well, gentlemen, if you want to imitate our cassette, you better make a stand-up, because without a stand-up, it gets a mess over the, in the whole world. And that worked. That's the reason that it didn't become obsolete too early. But it's taken 50 years to die.
practical role. Testing. Now what? You press record first. Our first song is I Write the Song. Live and direct, funky fresh for 93. The music industry has changed radically in our lifetime, and with it has changed the value of music. Now it's just this thing that you just download. So you're listening something served to you from some cloud, something out in the ether, but you can't touch it. So what stays the same is analog. It always sounds good to the ear, and it's what's left of humanity meeting music. The farther away I feel, the closer you get. The farther away I feel. <laughs> the digital realm is not moving parts. It's its own thing. It's fantastic for what it is, but I don't really I am not inspired by it at all. It's like film is better than like, you know, digital recording. No offense, what are you recording on? <laughs> Where do you think I'd be without the cassette? That's how Sub Pop discovered me. You know, here was the cassette. You could send it to somebody, you know, you could put music on it, you could record your voice on it. You record anything you want on it. These are just the tapes that were like on top of my boombox. It's just, it's, the pile never ends. I'm just glad it's a small bag. Dante Gabriel Rossetti has a sonnet that begins, a sonnet is a moment's monument. And it's funny, because like a, a sonnet doesn't do that for me. I love sonnets, but cassettes are what do that for me. I think objects become obsolete when we have figured out what we consider better ways to do something. It's a hard question, though, because what is better? Oh, young trees here. I, I think it's a, it's a birch, but there's quite a lot. It's a, it's a plague. It's not easy. We live in a time where things are becoming obsolete faster than perhaps ever before. It's always a newer, better version, whereas not so many years ago, the value of something was how well it was going to hold up against the clock. When your time has gone, huh, it's time to disappear. If there are better products than cassette, well, then you stop. I don't believe in eternity. That's the basic thing. <clears throat> and <laughs> the crazy thing, it's not yet over, huh? <laughs> Uh, all, uh, still, all those crazy people are working with the sets. Hmm? Now it's nostalgia, more or less. People prefer a worse quality of sound out of nostalgia. <laughs> So when we first did our tapes seven years ago or eight years ago, people just said, why? Why are you doing that? I don't have anything to play it on. Do you not want me to listen to your music? I think they probably thought it was some strange art project that probably wouldn't last very long, but 
it turns out it's probably the most dedicated cause that I've ever focused on in my life. I got three copies, one to stock, one to rock, and, and one to swap. Having multiple copies is, is what it's all about, you know? I really love this, look at this. You can't read the credits on the back of an MP3. You know, those are things that are kind of lost today, you know, with this push button, you know, fast paced world. Hit the ground faster than you want to. Hit the gas, you can only live to die. Straight away, hit you like a robot. Straight away, they are in your loser. Play it safe, something's got to turn on. Same thing, it's not pulling around you. Yeah, I'll work for the camera. Okay, oh. it's for you, oh. baby. As far as like cassettes coming back, a lot of people don't understand it. I usually just tell them, hey, we've sold 100,000 cassettes in the last five years. And they're like, really? And I say, yeah. But who's counting? Me. I think from an older crowd, you get this like, what, you have tapes? You know, they think it's kind of funny. It seems like this thing that you kind of thought had gone away. And it's cool to see it reemerge. of my 25 years of service in the company, I got offered a ceramic plate. This is the man who is responsible for the whole mechanism of the cassette recorder. He's deceased already. This is Lucien de Vogelaar. He's still alive and kicking, yeah. You're not a nostalgic person, are you? No, not, no, no. The only thing I'm nostalgic about is the, uh, the people I have been able to work with. That's a fine kind of nostalgia. Here is a photo of an enormous cassette. I think it's, it's about uh, six feet high or something. And where is that cassette right now? I made it in pieces and threw it away. I'm sorry, but it's, uh, it's the past. Mm -hmm. This is a recording. Mm -hmm. If you will be kind enough to leave a message, including your name and phone number, yeah, I love you. we will I return love your you. call as soon as we you get just want to wish you a happy new year. I'll talk to you in 1991. I think you weren't feeling good, Daddy says. What's the matter? You're telling somebody to listen. If you would have told me, I would have made you a pot of soup. I appreciate that. This tape was actually made 15 years ago today. It was a beautiful late summer day. I can tell you what chair I was sitting in when I made the tape. I can tell you what the afternoon light was coming through the window when I was making it. I can tell you what it was like to walk around Charlottesville, Virginia. I walked down Sunset Road Extended. I walked through the woods. I stopped at the Taco Bell, you know, for a snack. I can retrace all the steps they are part of listening to this music. These songs in this mix, it's saving that day, that moment. It's different because I put that music onto that piece of plastic. Changes the music, changes the day, and you know, that's just one tape. And as you can see, here, there are a bunch of them. Damn, what's there? Damn, that's, that's an old AD spine. Yeah, I love this stuff. At one point, I had like 15 bucks 
as like a fourth grader and you're like, whoa. And I went to People's Drugstore where they had the cassettes and like the guns or whatever, the, you know, the behind the glass box. They had some factory made cassettes. And the woman said, can I help you? I was like, and I was scared. I was like, oh, I, want, I want that one. And I was pointed at the live Grand Funk Railroad double cassette, you know, package. And the other day I actually heard something from that record. I was like, ah! My earliest experience with hearing recorded hip hop wasn't Rapper's Delight. It was actually a cassette of flashes on the beatbox going, flashes on the beatbox going. And like, if you knew that cassette, if you owned it, if you knew it by heart, then you were, you weren't just like, oh, I like, this new rap thing, like, it was like, oh, you were really down. You make intermittent trips to New York, and it was like, you know, like some kids, you know, some kids would go to get drugs, and some kids go to find and meet girls or get comic books. And it would be like, I'm going to get a mixtape. And it's like, I'm, I got the new, I got like 10 new Kid Capri, Ron G, whoever mixtape. And it was like the dopest thing ever. As you listen to my voice and the way I produce, make you want to feel just like Bust and Loose. As you float across the ocean, you may feel my drift, but you never, ever heard me rhyme like We were able to record our shows, record parties. You know, people were able to go back and say, yo, remember this party? Ha, ah, what party? Press play. Oh. Without cassettes, people wouldn't have the memory of last night. You gotta think about that. Probably the first time that uh, I might put music to uh, a piece of medium was with a cassette. I think the song was called Infected Pastrami. Yeah. Run real fast, run to your mommy, here it comes after you, infected pastrami or some sh terrible shit like that. I mean, I think I was 16 or 15. And it was done on a cassette player. A little nervous. <laughs> oh, there it goes. I think I was 16, 16 or 17. Let me die. No. Wow. Come on, me. <laughs> this is a pretty good example of my background compared to what I do now. That's like where I totally where I came, where I came from. <laughs> In about 1979, my sister and I were up in Connecticut. She said, hey, do you want to go to New Haven and see the Ramones? And it was this um, friend of my sister's and this guy who was kind of punky. Um, and I think he's European. Something about him seemed a little European. He said, let's listen to some music. And he pulled out a tape. It was decorated. Like the tape was decorated. Put the tape in, and the song by one band would play, and then a song by another band would play, and then a third song by a third band would play. This blew my mind. It was as if I was being schooled in a way that I had never been schooled before about the possibilities of a medium. This is Grandma Carl. How are you today, sweetheart? 
I decided that maybe it was time to make you another tape. And the first part of this tape will be music. I think the definition of nostalgia is from the Greek for going home. But for me, nostalgia is a sort of wistful way of thinking about something that happened, something that mattered in a way that's sort of both painful and pleasurable. This is uh, the Hustle Factory. Here's the car of the top manager, that was I. It's a black, a black Citroën. <laughs> is that the building where the cassette was invented? Yeah. Because we built this in 1960, brand new laboratory. So when did they close that Hasselt branch? Maybe 10 years ago. Because that's your time travel, right? If forever, like, God forbid, the day would come that, like, I don't remember the secret stars, or I don't remember the raincoats, or I don't remember the softies, I'll be able to, like, go through a shoebox of these tapes and go, like, yep, this. I remember this. I will not forget this. These moments that would otherwise be, like, lost in time, like tears and rain. We are on our way. Now these guys uh, asked for a meeting. These Eindhoven guys. Huh? And each of those guys played a role in the cassette? Yeah. The people who really did the development are mostly dead. Really happening, huh? Pickle pop. Two years ago, there was a storm and uh, the whole thing collapsed. I'm afraid uh, it's the same with this sort of weather now. Did they have this when you were younger? No. Absolutely not. How would you describe the music that comes out on Burger? It's just, um, it's just flavorful, yeah. juicy, good time, rock and roll and, and beyond. It's not just rock and roll, I mean, it's punk and funk and rock, whatever, man, crunk, hip hop. Um, We've crunched it, it up. Yeah, there's things I don't even know what you call them. It's just music. We want to open people's <laughs> minds to different kinds of music yeah. and like show them that Britney Spears is punk and like, <laughs> change their minds about the Bee Gees and uh, on whatever format floats their boat. Some people love cassettes and that's like their thing, you know? Okay, whenever you're ready. Well, 
on my far right is Mr. Lucien de Vogelaar, who did in the 60s the planning of the whole development operation. The next is Billy Leenders. In recent years, he has been occupied a lot with the history of the of the, uh, of the factory. And at my side is Hugo van Androje. He was in charge of the industrial design for the cassette. When we exactly started with this one, you mean? Yeah. I don't know. When? One year, what, what, what year? Uh, 63. 52. 63. 63. 63. Uh, 63. The first presentation was on the funk ausstellung. I have a lot of drawings with me. Are you, are you interesting? Type nummer 3146. AG3146. Ik ken ze allemaal. Ja. Ik ben blij dat ik die heb. Dat is goed gegaan, dat ding. En lief? Dat ding is niet goed. Ja. Wij maakten dus normaal spoelrecorders, horizontaal. En dan op zekere morgen. Riep onze baas, Roebot, ons, ons bij elkaar. En Otto zegt: Ik heb gisteren zo gefrunnen met die stomme spoelrecorder. We moeten iets anders gaan maken. Hij zei: We moeten iets maken dat heel compact is, dat je gemakkelijk kunt meenemen en dat in het spoeltje in de cassette zit. Zo is het eigenlijk begonnen. Het idee is eigenlijk van Loe. die daar gedestilleerd werd, en die is natuurlijk niet zo vriendelijk voor Lou, dat is dat de cassette geboren is uit de onhandigheid van een heel slimme man. <lacht> Zou het gewoon eens op bier moeten zetten? The black tape is some type of a high bias. This particular tape is, it should smell bad. It should smell like carbon black. We got a shipment one time and everybody who walked back here talked about how bad this area smelled. And it was just good tape and it came in and it had a, a powerful odor to it and the whole room smelled like good tape. Audio cassettes came on in the uh, early 70s for us. The Ampex representative came in one day with the first audio cassette I'd ever seen. And he showed me that and he said, this is going to be a really big thing in the future. And I looked at it and with my normal foresight, I said, no, it won't. That's a toy. Nobody's going to want that. It looks like it should go in a doll. Chems in the 60s, I think Phillips developed it. Before that, tape recordings were reel-to-reel -reel stuff. I remember my father giving me a little one. Uh, but it, it was a mess, man. Probably, sir. It was not consumer friendly. It was not foolproof. We more or less are all fools. I also. I'm a fool when I use the equipment. This is a reel of recording tape. For years, people have been threading it, spilling it, 
tangling with it, and sometimes breaking it. This is the compact cassette. Up to 90 minutes of tape you don't have to tangle with. It won't break or spill or get on your nerves. Another nice thing, it's portable. Hip hop emerges largely out of New York, that is itself a pan African center of the world. Before radio, before video, a lot of rap music was disseminated on mixtapes. And that became the lifeline of hip hop. Cassettes didn't play a role in hip hop in the early days. Cassettes were hip hop. Well, this HBI, and you better believe it with the son of Bam Bam on the wrist to eat. It's guaranteed to be the sound that you all enjoy because you know the Prince of Charm is the real McCoy. So sit back while you listen to the Zulu beat, and if you feel good enough, you can. Rap music that extended from the hip hop culture was being spread through cassette tapes. And that's when we had the boxes. The radio boxes that we used to carry up and down all throughout the inner city, quote unquote, the ghetto. Bambada, Theodore, Flash, you know, Charlie Chase, all the great early DJs, like they're only playing vinyl. Unless you were there, the only way you were hearing that show or that set or that party was via cassette. This wasn't high fidelity audio scene. And I kind of liked that in a way. There was something very punk rock about it. And there was something very punk rock about early hip hop anyway. This is, it was really correlative. Everyone had one of those single speaker Norelco rectangular cassette decks. And you could stand it up, aim it at your band, and record something crazy and play it back. A portable audio to record and play opened up minds. Uh, Victor, if you're there, uh, don't pick up yet. I'll get this new song I'd like to sing for you. I remember that night in the city garden Where those abandoned buildings stood around Us, we were talking about changes I haven't played in a long time, and I guess you can tell, can't you? <laughs> Ik mensen die wat geluiden gingen opnemen, het eerste woordje van een baby uh, op vogeltjes in het bos. Het is pas echt een revolutie geworden dat men cassette, muziekcassettes ging, uh, ging maken. Commercieel willen ze dat er gepatenteerd wordt, dat we patenten nemen. Loes zegt nee, al die het wil maken mag het maken, maar we eisen een bepaalde kwaliteit en een standaard. Als hij van in het begin een apparaat koopt, kan hij dat blijven gebruiken. Als hij nog tien jaar een cassette koopt, kan hij nog altijd op dat eerste apparaat dat gebruiken. Eén apparaat, één standaard, één, één muziekdrager. A thing with unlimited possibilities for recording and playing back music. The spoken word, any sound. That's why it's it was all about being able to sort of do something that um, was within your means. Um, for me to do a, a record, it would have cost hundreds of dollars or something, you know, was, and I just did not, I didn't have that kind of money. With the right act, I should say the right type of person, putting music onto cassette tape is a perfectly valid choice. Cassettes are something that are shared, that tend to come out of collectives who are creating music because they love it, not because they're kind of striving for some big success within music.
there's a politic and a philosophy behind an interpersonal exchange in the street versus downloading something online. There's something about community there, and there's also something about the offline, unsanctioned, outside of state surveillance exchange that we're losing. There's always been the idea of the gatekeeper, the toll booth, the, the, the provider, you know, the middleman. You know, the idea of being able to record your own cassettes, I think, was very powerful. I'd like I'd like to thank Warner Brothers, okay, Capital, MGM, and RCA for letting this take you possible. Thirteen goblins are running up and down. Thirteen goblins running up and down. Thirteen goblins running up and down. When I was first in Austin and I had those tapes, I would, anybody that looked like they were interested in music at all, even the slightest, yeah, they were cheap, you know, and I could make copies myself. And then after it was all over and uh, I, I really didn't have anything left, it, you know, I had this tape of Hi, How Are You? and I got it published. If I hadn't had the cassette tape, I'm sure it would have been end up in a mental hospital, you know, and gone within a year or two or something, or escaped on the road, or what? What else? What other alternatives did I have, Marge? There was no other medium that we understood, but the cassette was the go-between to where you could make music, because you're not going to go into a studio, can't afford it. What, you bring your gear in and they record you? That was like this, this mountain. The average citizen can't record an LP. He could not record an 8-track, but he could record a cassette. That's the point right there. Now we expected it would be a success, but not a revolution. Yeah. <laughs> first thing you invented as a kid? I was I was always playing with Meccano. What is that? That's the first structure building toys. Do you think you still have those somewhere? Yeah, I'm sure. When people say that you invented the cassette, do you take credit? I can be credited for the idea, and I have a number of ideas in it, but uh, the draftsman, the 
electrical designers and the, and the industrial designer, they have done the work. I have done nothing special. Isn't a friend someone that loves you and somebody you love? Somebody you can just tell anything you want to to? Okay. This is an article I wrote about um, the 50th anniversary of cassette tapes back in uh, 2013. The man who invented the compact cassette tape doesn't remember what was recorded on the very first one, but he does remember what came next. Here I was calling him up to have this sort of nostalgic conversation about the 50th anniversary of this thing he had invented that had changed the world, and I was going to write this whole article about it. And he had a little bit of that nostalgia for this time in his life, but he was totally not nostalgic at all about the technology that has sort of gone away. You know, maybe if you invented it, it would seem like it belonged in that part of your life. Are you ready for that? Yeah. Is that okay? What happens then? Let's see, we're about moving. Let's get to the right way, but maybe somewhat further. Incredible. The number of types. You put a, a stack of cassettes here in, and then it plays and transports them back. The change has not, not, never been a big success, I think. This is the first radio with a built-in cassette recorder. So that was the first boombox? Yeah. Yeah, that was the first one. Normally, I'm more interested in the future than in the past. Yeah, I don't know to what extent any of this is going to survive as a move to the digital era. If not obsolete, the value will be in, in archiving a history and memorabilia. Um, although it may become important again in terms of, of reviving and sustaining underground unsanctioned communication. If you want a tape, it's because you want a physical copy. 
it's not something that happens uh, at a touch of a button. It's something that happens at a touch of two buttons, which is record and play at the same time. We hadn't put a record out in three years, so our label decided to release our album on a tape this year. CD seems to be a little more phased out, and the tape is something that you know, they're starting to do more of. And they said the tape has been selling more than anything right now. It's not like record store day where I actually camp out. I've camped out 12 hours for records. But cassette store day, it's not big enough. It's like the third year or so. Hold on, let me turn this off. The ones I got today, I went by the cover only. They were just really cool. They were just really cool covers. I grew up with cassettes. I grew up poor in the Bronx with an older sister. Just got the hand-me-downs, and we were always a couple years behind in technology. Like, I also have an obsession for zines, records, patches. It was that or drugs. It was one of the two things. Like, my dad doesn't get it at all. My mom, she's like, she gets it. She's like, you like it, do it. But, uh, he's not into that. He's like, that's stupid. Have you put out any tapes? Oh, yeah. What's it called? Uh, chopped cheese. It's a sandwich in the Bronx. Does this increase in sales mean we're witnessing a cassette resurrection? Record stores around the country are pressing rewind for the first ever cassette store day. Hi, uh, welcome to the cassette store day, if that's why you're here at Rough Trade. If not, then hi, it's cassette store day. Who out there is buying cassettes? Why it seems like something that's trying to piggyback on the success of Record Store Day. So who came up with the idea of Cassette Store Day? Yes, I take credit for the idea. <laughs> and responsibility. And it was a shit idea. Anyway. <laughs> we got a ridiculous response when we kind of announced it online. The question that kept coming up was, uh, so a cassette's going to overtake CDs and vinyl? And it's like, no, that's, no, that's, that's not, not the, the point guess, of the day. It? We're not trying to save the format to the point where it becomes this huge thing and the future goes completely backwards. Like, it was just to celebrate the format that we love and that we still release on. Yeah, I think lots of people, including my mother, probably thinks, wow, cassettes, really? Here's some good news for those of you waxing nostalgic right now. Cassettes have not gone away. What is it about audio cassettes that makes them so popular still? Is there something more than just this idea that people want to be retro? When you make cassettes, you can catalog little moments of culture. Like, I can't walk into a building with, like, a trench coat and have vinyl, but I can have tapes in my pocket, tapes in my backpack, and there's been so many times where I've just loaded up tapes in a bag and headed out to a show. Those are my favorite nights.
artifact might die with whatever is digital. You're not going to go look in a shoebox and find all like digital files to look at. The cassettes I never can keep in stock, besides like goth and metal, are hip hop and oldies. As soon as I put them out, they're gone. There's just like all these bizarre cassettes that I find. They're like my secret gems that I don't know how to display yet. <laughs> Concerto for astronauts. <laughs> Who doesn't want this? Got some sports rap, up and comers, a porn soundtrack cassette. Sometimes I've heard like really, really awesome cassette conversations between customers downstairs. Like one guy goes to this other guy, he's like, how many cassettes do you have? He's like, oh, at home? I don't know, like probably like 100, 200. He's like, huh, I've got thousands. <laughs> he was like the cassette lord and he was in my presence. It was cool. <laughs> The profit that we make from these financially is about the, the profit that we make from the emotional value these things carry. Hello. Uh, just dropping these cassettes on. I want to create a physical, tangible object that I can share with somebody and that maybe they can enjoy some of the experience that I do with other people's records. I started a punk band <laughs> and I made a cassette. We made them ourselves. We got the covers printed across the street at the copy place. Like it, it was a pretty cheap way to do it all. I don't think we have any more left. We also have the same thing just like on a CD. It doesn't sell. You'd think the rise of streaming audio would mean that hard copy music formats would just be, you know, over. Tapes are making an unlikely comeback. Tape sales are up 79% from last year's Why is it the cassettes won't stay dead? We found a company in Springfield, Missouri, that in 2014 made more than 10 million cassette tapes. In 2000, we saw a downturn, and a lot of our competitors started pulling in their horns, going out of business. The companies who built our equipment are all gone, and we have to make our own parts and be self-sufficient now. And I think that's the secret to our survival. All I wanted was a job, you know. And I was told my son on the phone I, that I found a job. And he said, Mom, he says, that's not going to last. He says, you need to find something else. And I said, no. I said, I really think I'll like this. And here it's 11 years later. We did books on tape. 
We did a lot of gospel tracks. It's more individuals now for uh, duplicated tapes. I listen to the beginning of it and the end on both sides and check for tone and it's music, you know. But it's not the music I grew up with. It's not what I'd call country music. It might be today's country music, but I'm not into that. <laughs> Who's buying? Who's buying tapes? I don't know. People on the internet. People on the internet are buying tapes. Now, mostly it's it's kids. I would say our age range is probably from like 13 to no 13. I mean, I don't know. How do we know how I, old people are online? I don't know. Just from I mean, seeing our fans and things and people who come to shows. Maybe like, I feel like 14 to 30 home. or. I'd say that, I don't know. So, 15, 30 or so? No, all of And I older mean, and younger, I don't, I don't know. Kids it's, of all ages, I don't know. Yeah. I don't From a commercial point of view, it's really very, very niche. Vinyl, for example, which everyone talks about, you'd think, you know, we were tripping over for vinyl the way people discuss it sometimes. I think still only accounts for less than 2% of the overall recorded music sales um, in this country. Cassette is, is way below that. In terms of what cassettes, where, they, where their place is today, I don't know. But I make music for the people. And that's a boutique item. It's the same reason why people go back to vinyl. It's like because it's you know because it sounds better, you know, or it's all because because we're not original. That's why the cassettes coming back in because everything has been done now. Either you get it, or you respect it, or you don't. You know, I've gotten laughed at and shit. You know, like friends of mine, they're like, dude, nah, man, it's. That shit ain't gonna come back. Or well, why would you even listen to that shit now? If somebody explicitly said you're an idiot for releasing music on cassette tape, um, then I would say nothing. And I think I would take my headphones and I'd put them back on, press play, and fuck off in the other direction. Sometimes I wonder if people are just are just trying to be difficult, you know, do cassette re releases. Having said that, I still have a cassette player in my car. I have a CD cassette player, and God forbid, I mean, I've had to buy a new one. I'm going to be it's going to be a sad day because they're getting very hard to find, and I don't really see any reason to put out music on a format that you can't play. in the wrong direction. One of the very first cassettes. <laughs> After 500 pieces production, we changed the track position.
Is that the earliest cassette you think you have? Yeah. That's from one of the very first. <laughs> Discovery, yeah? This is the original drawing of the cassette. We started in the wrong direction. When you play an old recording on a new player, then uh, you get nonsense. See if I can find that cassette for you, because I I know I have it around here somewhere. I lost the box and the J card of this particular cassette, but so I had to make a new one. And it says it's titled "Extremely Old Tape." This is my first ever cassette, and I would make album tapes with this by putting the tape recorder up to my mother's speaker. I guess this will sound okay, and you hear cars going by, dogs barking. You know, I try and play it on the school bus the next day, and you're like, God, this sucks. So this is from like 1970 something. So this is uh, tape one. I still have a yellow waterproof Walkman. About two years ago, I was on a train. I was on a, the R train with my headphones listening, and nobody paying me no mind. So I open up my cassette player, I flip the cassette, and it falls on the ground on the R train. It was like, it was like I defecated in the middle of the, of the, of the car. Everybody was like, Mm, are these like in the movies? Do you know what that is used for? Walkie talkie? Uh, I have no idea what it is. Wait, wait, wait. It's a cassette player, right? Uh, this is a rip off because you, you want to listen, but you can't because you don't have any headphones. Hand over the headphones. In the 1980s, it was like, whoa, it's something that can play music and I can carry it around if I have a large pocket. It works. In 65, we went to Japan to demonstrate the cassette player. And Oga says, demonstrate your model. And then he turned up the volume, hmm? loud, as loud as possible. So and then we, you could hear the hiss. Huh? <laughs> hip-hop radio show is WHBI. People would record that, and then if your man wanted it, you were gonna get a double cassette recorder and go from one cassette to another cassette. And then now he has that, and he's like, yo, his man wants it. So now he's gonna take that second generation cassette and make a copy that sounds even worse. So by the time I got it, now I got like a fifth generation copy and it's hissed out, you know, it's like a snake. It's stuck in my cassette. Uh, I got the Craig G's, I got the Cutmaster C's. Uh, oh, I got a Craig G sneaking up on your ass, part one. 
Then I got a case lay and action pack mixtape. I mean, I got, I got joints. Got joints. Got joints. Analog is just straight nasty. It's just, that's what it is. And I, that part I like of it. I, I can hear that all day. That digital, that digital sound, that, that clearness, and um, I can do it without. Yeah, I gotta do this. I got a 1988 mixtape. I gotta play this one. Oh. Wow. I got to rewind that. Hold on. Listening to sort of cassette tape music, it, it seems more relative in a way to the human condition. Um, because our bodies are not digital, we're not robots, and your body feels different every day, and it goes through changes, and it, it's, uh, you know, it gets worn down the more your body goes over that tape head of life. <laughs> You're here to be exactly. It's messy, it's sloppy, it's dirty. It's marked the way a human body is marked. By the space and time it passes through, it, it wears those scars and those scuffs, and that becomes part of why you love the tape. when it gets weird and kind of stretched and you still want to hear it, as opposed to a skipping CD. You don't keep listening to a skipping CD, you throw it away. You look thrilled. Now that you have we decided that we would go on with the idea of an optical uh, disc. So you had no sentimental feelings about the cassette? No, I'm, I'm, you should never, never hesitate to use the possibilities. That's, that's in, in our souls. Hmm? Um, yeah, CD is just the best thing that's happened to Hi-Fi for years. For the first time, um, people can sit at home and, and hear sound very close to the, the way we intended them to hear it. I think every kid in America got a CD player. I know that because we released Red Medicine, the Fugazi record. I think we decided to press 25,000. A year later, I had 14,000 Red Medicine cassettes sitting in a warehouse in Chicago. 14,000 cassettes not selling. Like CDs were selling like hotcakes and cassettes were over. Digitization, if that's a word, very much cleaned up and sanitized the world of music. The warts and all aspect of music. Here comes the CD, and all of a sudden people say, well, CDs sound better because there's no clicks or pops or hiss. When I spoke to Lou Adams, I got the impression that you know, he's an engineer who spent his life trying to make the next thing. And again, make it better and easier and cheaper and smaller. And that he did that. They went to CDs and then they got their flash drives and, and you know, it just keeps moving on. And I read the article in Time about the cassettes and the guy uh, said that he was ready to move on the one that invented them, and he invented the CD, so he was moving on from that. What do you think they like about the cassette? 
it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of familiar to them. They, you can see what you have. On a USB stick, you can't say, well, that's, that, that's you, no. Like I said, you have something in your hand. Hmm? It's emotional. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, a buddy of mine, Joe Cole, um, was was murdered years ago. Um, these are his tapes, and this is his handwriting. And he's, you know, he's gone. But th this is what he left behind. There's nothing digital about this. This was made in real time. And you you don't throw this out. You take good care of it. Because someone took time out of their life that they can't get back to make that tape for you. Probably the most boring thing you'll come across are commercial recordings that were issued on cassette. I would much rather uncover somebody putting on Star Wars in the backyard and recording it than maybe listen to an albeit wonderful LP of the Eagles or something. Aaron Copeland, everyone. This is my first attempt. It says various artists on it, because I was really, I was really trying. This is called Days Gone By in DC. See, that's like, it's already sentimental. You know, if you said, do you remember the first time you heard the Violent Femmes? Yeah, it was on a mixtape that our friend gave me, you know? Do you remember the first time you heard uh, the Butthole Surfers? Yeah, it was on a mixtape a friend gave me. I can't tell you how many countless bands, Black Flag, Minor Threat, Fat Boys, Houdini, all on a mixtape. That was all on a mixtape. You'd get creative with your cover. You'd like, you know, cut and paste and like, you'd have your glue stick and you'd have your construction paper. You'd have all your, your photos or your whatever. Your heart would be racing if you're like giving it to like a girl that you know, you like. Check this out, you know, like, like <laughs> hoping to like win her over with my, you know, my, my pristine taste in music. The mix CD for the girl you're trying to romance, the mix CD is like dry humping a nog high couch. The mix tape, where you have sat there thinking all night. Okay, if, if, if I can get this intro just right on the pause. I didn't get it, I didn't get it. In fact, I ate the last two seconds of the last song, which means I gotta rewind the tape and grab that song again. It's four in the morning, I have to be up at nine, and I'm still making this mixtape because I really want this girl to like me. How do I know this? <laughs> what, you think I read this somewhere? No, I lived those mixtapes, man. And so, the cassette, is one of those things that's very near and dear to me on, on so many levels you can't imagine. The first audio letters I ever did, I would record them for, you know, this, this girl I liked. And I would leave them. I'd hide them in places, you know, like in her yard or whatever, and she'd have to go out and get them. You have to be careful not to put songs that use the word love, because you want it to be, you know, it's cool, and it's like, I like you, but you don't want to be crazy. That's like a very careful balance you have to strike. It starts with uh, thinking of someone sitting uh, next to the cassette player and maybe uh, getting emotional, getting in a certain mood, and in that mood choosing the music that really was made me think of him. It's been a long time. My brother loves you. My brother loves you. The whole family loves you, okay? I know you can hear this. You no know, matter what happens. I just want to tell you that you're okay? beautiful tonight, and I love you, and I'll be right back. So Bye.
there's a power of, of sound that any recording captures, but a cassette, because it just has this personalized component. Um, if someone gives you a cassette that they've made for you, and you have to take it seriously. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just throw it away. I was listening, I was listening to what you were saying. You're the oldest young person I've ever known. Makes me feel tired, man. She belongs to her mother and the state. Just trying to flip it off, which she practically says to help run by herself. Did you say he? Leave back? When we still have one another, it meant a lot. Everything means a lot. Every little single thing. You know, it's the potential. It is what is to be done. What, you know, here's the blank cassette. Here's the recording machine. It's in your hands. I like that. There isn't just one way to do it. One kind of music. Uh, people tell a little bit, a bit about themselves by showing you what they listen to. The people who use it nowadays, they are special people. Mm -hmm. They have a hobby. They love their they love their cassettes. It's not really uh, 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 rational. Mm -hmm. It's it's a rather irrational activity. I like that. What happens if and when this upswing stops? <laughs> well, we've been asking ourselves that for the last 10 years. Being told you can't do this, it can't be done anymore. This product is obsolete, nobody wants it. And then coming here, coming to work every day is an amazingly rewarding thing. If this ended, then I'll find something else, but I like this. I wouldn't want to quit and go have another job right now. I'm just, you know, ride it out and see what happens. People still have tape players. You know, they can go dust off their boom box or, you know, <laughs> get in their car and drive around and listen to it and it just, it feels good. We have uh, records and tapes for sale out there if anybody's interested in that sort of thing. We got through that period where tapes might have died. We're in an era now where your independent record shops, you'll feel very comfortable to walk in and say, oh, where's, your, where's the tape stand? Where, where do I get the tapes from? I, th I feel like that's here to stay. I mean, I don't know what, what the future is for cassettes, but I'm not throwing mine away. The stamping mill, the leather balance, the sports car, you can do everything. A dumper truck, <laughs> pure nostalgia. With Meccano, we made not only these examples, but the idea was, of course, that you use the available material and you make your own design that gets a habit. My whole life I have realized my hobbies. If you have a hobby, do it. And the best source of happiness is doing what you like.
And maybe that's why punk came around, because of things, you know, like the cassette experience. You could take things into your own hands. You could write your own story, paint your own picture, write your own poem, sing your own song. And you didn't have to be, you know, swimming in this. It could be Kano. Before then, it was only the cassette. And if you did not get the mixtape, which began on cassette, then you were not hearing anything. You were not exposed to rap music. So no, it would be nowhere. It would be nowhere. Where do you think I'd be without the cassette? Not here. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the cassette. Is that wild? Think about it. A hundred years from now, and this is just my wet dream idea, maybe like some guy wants to, you know, hear the Dead Sea Scrolls of something and like, and he'd go to this shelf and go like, Eureka, we have found it. And all of a sudden the door of the past opens. Someone's got to be that pain in the ass guy who goes like, I'll, I'll get a copy of that. And shelves and goes like, and so I'm that pain in the ass guy. This is no different than train spotting. But it's got a beat to it. There's like hundreds of tapes, like just like on my floor, that you know, like I will die before I have a chance to listen to them all again. But it prevents these moments from dying and keeps them alive for the future, if the future wants them. How do you do? It's almost disingenuous. Like, here, take my CDR. You take my CDR. I can't work or write or anything or focus when I'm listening to music digitally because I'm like, ooh, I should skip this song. Or, ooh, this song reminds me of another song I want to hear. I should make a new playlist just for the playlist that I'm listening to while I'm making the next playlist. You know, it's like cigarettes. Selfie. Who talked to you about selfies? Nobody. I just read it. It exists. I should do it like every week. Just, just randomly drop a cassette on a train car. Actually, do me a favor. Watch this documentary and then go on a train and drop a cassette by accident and see how people react. <laughs> This is a new Justin Timberlake record. Was only on cassette. Only. Man, you got an entire generation of young girls and young boys, more girls, going out and buying and looking for Walkmans or cassette players. That would be insane. Justin, if you're listening, <laughs> you can make history. <laughs> It's got a speaker. A speaker? Uh-huh. It, it records audio. <laughs> <laughs>
so. It's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the end of this film. Signing off. This has been Eric Films Production Company Incorporated. 13 goblins and bad bananas. 13 witches yelling for some food. 13 giants yelling for some food. And 13 witches yelling for some food. 13 goblins messing up your head. 13 goblins messing up your bed. 13 goblins yelling. Oh, be so tüglich. Seen to buy the hurt. Mögen sie klagen. Mögen sie scherzen. Oft spielt ein Lächeln um ihre Züge, oft fließen Tränen alle. When Grammy was a little girl, my mommy used to sing me this little song so I could remember my ages. Now, could you do that with Grammy? Try it again. You sing with me this time, okay? <laughs>